trabalhei numa loja como como vendedor. I worked in a shop as a salesman, and then after there was the time of the military service. But then after I left the military service, I have no specialization, no perspective of life. So I decided to go back in the same life that I have, the example of my father, the way he lived. So I was going to the same direction of the life that my father had. A gente sempre teve uma educação. We have always been taught and been brought up in a Christian background. My my father, he was going to a denomination, a church. So my mom was going to, and I, and I also was going to this church. I went to many other churches actually, but with time passing, I just start to understand that things should be that way, and I have to accept it. Né? Eu não via Deus. I never seen God, and I thought God was up there looking at us down here. But you, you have to keep going that way, bearing that way. So would not bring any difference into my life, being or not a Christian. This word sacrifice, it was not a word that we would hear in the preachings there. I have never heard about the Universal Church before. I just heard about other churches, many, because I used to go in many churches. But there was a moment I went to the college where I studied to do some documentation. And I met a person there that was studying with me back then. So we talking and this person made this invitation gave me the address and said, there, there you're going to see what you're going to have there. So I've been to many churches, one more, one less, I'll go. Uma mais, uma menos, não vai fazer diferença. So the first meeting, the service, I was criticizing everything, not listening at all. The pastor would speak things that was completely different than what I have ever heard. It was not matching what I knew. If you use your faith, you can conquer. I thought to myself, what is this? What kind of faith can conquer? So he has a dialogue that I can say very bold. And that if I use my faith and the sacrifice, if I use my faith, God would answer me. The first time I reject, second time, I just listen, and the third time I said, I'm going to go there without criticizing. I'm going to listen. And when the pastor started to speak about the faith, how the people should be, and showing the Bible what he was saying. So what I did at home after, it was very interesting because I didn't have the habit of reading the Bible. So when I got home, I went to check all that he spoke. And what he spoke was really written there. So I felt the condition that I could choose the life that I want. So I said to myself, so I don't need to live this kind of life, a failure life. God wants the best for me. And this was very interesting because it was a deliverance to me. At that moment, I just knew the doctrines, the religious, the laws of religion, that would make my life to be that way, to be a Christian. But I did not know the God that was the responsible for everything, the one who was going to teach me to do everything. So at that moment, there was a restoration inside of me. And in the same year, there was the campaign of Israel. And it was a turning point into my life because At that moment, I was working as a salesman in a small business, and I would earn a salary and a half, more or less. And I was recently married with my wife, and we working to pay the debts. I was living in a studio that was rented, just bed and kitchen. And that campaign of Israel was very important for me. Because I took everything that I have at that time, 
That was my salary and I placed on the altar and I went with that assurance that God was with me and all that I have learned through the Holy Spirit, through the Bible, through the preachings. I was going to put to test what I have learned. É, que eu estaria provando exatamente aquilo que foi dito. I had the trust that uh, the Holy Spirit was preparing the day, let's say, the special day. I'd say that is the most important conquest that I have received. I can say it. There would not be other conquests that I can consider but just the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit for me it's my balance, it's what gives me assurance and comfort and peace and joy and trust, everything. Not long after, I was promoted at my job where my salary was increased three times. So, what changed radically, our financial condition, we continue sacrifice, and not long after, we bought our own apartment, and we paid it in cash, and after I bought another apartment, I opened the shop of accessories for women and straight after I opened a clothing shop and there was many campaigns but there was this one that I had a house that was rented here in Sao Paulo and in the time of the campaign the tenant moved out right in the time of the campaign I said that's it because God confirmed that it was a long time that I want to put this house on the altar. So I sold the house and I put it on the altar. At the time, it was worth 300,000 more or less. And it's indifferent if I'm putting a car, a house, or an amount that is financial, because I'm not worried with what I have to do. Because the worry is what God wants that I do. For somebody who was living in Rio de Janeiro in a, in a room dividing bed and kitchen, today I live in a very nice place, luxurious apartment. So I have my car, she has her car, and we travel, we eat what we want. We go where we want. It's a privilege to serve God with what he's given to me. I have in, in me, with me, that all that is mine belongs to God. At this moment now of the pandemic situation, so I had the opportunity to help even more the work of God in many things that I could help. And I see that it's God, it's God it's himself putting me in the position that I should be, the one that is to supply the, the soul winning work. That's why God blesses us. So the altar, I can say, that is the place where we effectively get to know who God is and show to God who we are. E Deus sabe quem você é. May God bless all of you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We are back with one more prayer. Today is the 13th prayer in the faith of the revolt. Of the revolt for those who want to see the glory of God in this campaign of Israel. What a, a great testimony we just saw now, Pastor Diego. Where this man said now in the end that uh, today his worthiness is to please God. He always make sure that he never comes to the altar what, with what he wants, but he's always with what God asks him. And this is exactly 
the secret of the faith. He does not mind that God's gonna ask this or that. He's for sure said whatever God says is His. It's it already belonged to Him because I had nothing. He was nothing, and God made Him to be where He is today. And when this person that is watching thinks, "Oh, it's too hard to do what He did," no, no, no. It's because He understood there was no other way. It was the only way for him to be a new man, a new life to be born was the altar. Exactly. And today we even spoke to the people about that, the, the offering uh, that is accepted and the sacrifice that is accepted and the sacrifice that is rejected. In the Bible we see that uh, when Cain came to God to present his sacrifice, that the sacrifice was not rejected. And we were meditating upon that because... Many times we say God reject the sacrifice of Cain. But before God had reject the sacrifice of Cain, Cain reject God. And that happens exactly when the person um, sometimes don't walk their faith, don't obey the voice of God. You know, he's, this gentleman that we saw the testimony, what he said in other words is, I make sure that what I do, God will accept because he knew the moment that God accepts what I am placing on the altar, that is my life, my completely life, so surely that God will bless me. And this is the secret of faith. And wherever you are, my dear friend, that is what the Holy Spirit is proposing you, for you to do what God is asking you to do, like happened with Gideon. It was not Gideon who decided to place the second bull on the altar, was God that asked Gideon the second bull. Like the same way, was not uh, uh, Abraham who decided to, to, to sacrifice Isaac, was God who asked. And the list is long, uh, the testimonies, the examples of the heroes of the faith of today, people who are examples for us that when we obey, it's impossible that God fail. God never fails. And they are the heroes of today, the heroes of faith of today. Each testimony we show to you, they are the heroes to mirror what they did. And what the pastor is, is saying, it's, it's, it's simplified as the gap between a good offering and a sacrifice is that the good offering I decide to give. But the sacrifice is whatever God asks. And, and God not going to ask easy. Uh, and when is a sacrifice, when the person put what God asks, the transformation happens straight away. Because sometimes people ask, when I'm going to see? The transformation happened in, in, in that moment. Every testimony, that happened with me, with you as well. When we come to the altar, you know, there is something powerful that happens. It's not that uh, I come to the altar poor and I leave the altar rich. I come to the altar single and I leave the altar marriage. It's not that the point that I'm saying. But I, I leave the altar with vision. Many people don't conquer because they don't have vision. Many people don't go forward because they, they are stuck. They don't know where to, to go. Uh, uh, the moment that the Spirit of God is in us and the offering, the sacrifice, I mean, that is accepted, there is that, uh, that confirmation. You know, there is that strength. There is that power. That, honestly speaking, words cannot express. I'm trying to find the right words to say. But the truth is, I, I, I can't find the words to say what is the experience. I don't know if you... It's like, it's like uh, when we use this example. Uh, the person leaves the altar pregnant of the blessing. Exactly. We can't see the woman pregnant in the first month, two months, but she knows I'm pregnant. And she it doesn't need anybody to tell her different. She feels, She's she knows. sure. There is an assurance inside of her. There is a child being, being generated inside of me. Even though eyes cannot see, she already feel the changes. Everything is different now. Everything starts to be different. And the more close she gets to have her child in her arms, the, 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 the greater is the difference. Exactly. It's exactly the example was, was there is no better example to give. You know, the person leaves the altar pregnant, pregnant of God's presence. And in that moment that the person leaves the altar, the person knows my life will not be the same. We're going to pray for you right now. Pastor Diego is going to make this cry out today for you. And we're going to determine your victory. You who are in this faith with us. Or perhaps if you are watching me today for the first time, someone shared this prayer with you and you want to change your life. Maybe you have been knocking at many doors. Maybe you have been trying. And you say, I need a transformation of my life. You know, my dear friend, the altar is the place 
to change your life. Pastor, make this prayer for the people. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, my Lord, we bring to you our cry out right now. Together with these men, these women, people who are in suffering, people who are humiliated. Maybe this person, my Lord, they start to watch this prayer right now and they were crying. They were in tears because they are suffering. Somebody may be just wondering about giving up living, committing a suicide. But right now you brought to them the word that brings life, the word of faith, the word that they should be revolted, not against the world, but they should be revolted vote against that situation they should my lord place their focus on your altar and have a new life just like this man in the testimony just like Gideon just like all the heroes of faith they place their trust entirely on you oh my dear friend determine right now that you're gonna do whatever God asks you because your life it is not worth to live this way so you're gonna have a new life on the altar you're gonna place your all, all that you are, all your life, all your trust on the altar of God, and your life will certainly be transformed in Jesus Christ's name. In the name of Jesus, make your prayer to God right now. Yes, I'm going to put a little bit this, the music up for you to pray and for you to determine your victory. Yes, in the name of Jesus, and receive your victory, receive your blessing, receive your transformation right now by faith. In the name of Jesus, I bless you. We stretch our hands towards you right now, and we give you what we have. Receive the Spirit of God, and if you believe and you agree, say Amen. My dear friend, be absolutely sure of your miracle. Tomorrow, Pastor Diego, Saturday, you're going to be leading the people of Gothenburg to the altar. This person that is already on the altar, this person that wants to be on the altar, wants to change their life, that live in Gothenburg and around. We have our, our place there. Né? Simple place. Simple place. Where very soon we're going to have our, our second help center of, or in Sweden, in Gothenburg. But uh, it's a very simple place. But there we're going to have the spiritual altar. We're going to lead you through the word of God you to the life that God has promised. Where is it and what time? We're going to be there in, in Gothenburg at 1 p.m. Portuguese, 2 third in English. And this person that is watching us and whatever problem you have is something that we have been thinking. Sometimes they, they seek, seek for many places. The sick has to go to the hospital. The other one has to go to the lawyer. The other one has to go to the pharmacy. But the altar has the answer for everything. Exactly. It's one place where the answer is there. And there in Gothenburg, we're going to be there tomorrow, bringing this power to this person who lives there. Amen. Tomorrow, Saturday in Gothenburg, as every Saturday, but tomorrow, especially there. One o'clock in Portuguese, two o'clock, or two, two thirty in, in English. Sunday, 11 o'clock in the morning in our headquarters. Also, we're going to be here joining our faith together. And you are our guest to be with us, okay? To come to the altar and to change your life. On Monday, we're going to come back for the the fourth week of prayer, going towards the Mount of Gideon, to, to the Valley of Gideon, I mean, going to the blessing, to the miracle, and to the transformation that God has promised. Have a wonderful night. May God bless you. And until, until Sunday in church, or till tomorrow in Gothenburg, and Monday, 9 p.m., we'll be back. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. The jar in their hands And the cry of war in their heart That night they went To fight the Midianites